Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Frankie if you're new here and this is a new series that I'm starting, Things I Wish I Had Known About Different Aspects of Motherhood. So we're going to kick off this new series with Things I Wish I'd Known About Weaning. So weaning is quite an interesting topic for me. Um, we'll get into why, but I read information and felt fully prepared and there was a lot of things that I wish I had known still that I kind of found out as I was doing it on the job as such so yeah we'll get straight into it first up on what I wish I had known about weaning is it is scary and I personally went into weaning thinking it was gonna be quite easy quite straightforward I felt quite chilled about it until I started and you know as soon as my six month old put a bit of carrot in her mouth I just panicked I was like she's not gonna be able to chew that she's gonna choke obviously I tried not to show her any of my fear and really encouraged her but I did find it really hard and I found it really scary I think a couple of things that made it a bit scarier along the way is that we did have a couple of near choking experiences, um, times where we, you know, had to get her out of the chair and um, help her sort of pass or get out whatever was not lodged in her throat because she wasn't choking, but she was just kind of struggling with whatever was like in her throat, like struggling to swallow it. <laughs> sounds really dramatic really wasn't that bad and as a parent as a first-time parent I think reflecting on those situations obviously I was on high alert as was my partner and we probably reacted a certain way when maybe it didn't need to we didn't need to but yeah just to reiterate I found it really scary as did my partner Phil it's a whole scary situation <laughs> On to the next thing, and I feel like nobody really tells you this, and that is that they literally eat nothing for a really long time. So at the beginning of weaning, I think once I had started weaning Juno onto solids, I found out that they don't actually have to eat anything for a really long time, which would have been really useful information because I knew that she was kind of exploring textures and exploring flavor and stuff, but I did kind of assume that she would actually consume some food and she really didn't for quite a long time, unless it was like a rusk or yogurt. Apart from that, everything was kind of just like in the mouth, spat out the mouth, like squidging everything in her hands, which is obviously perfect. It's exactly what you want them to do. But I didn't know that. I assumed that they had to kind of eat some stuff, but it I was wrong. They don't have to consume anything for a really long time. And actually their milk feeds uh, make up for everything. You don't replace any of their feeds with food for ages. So I could have done with that information when I went into weaning from milk to solids. So the next one is don't put pressure on yourself. And it's really hard not to because I think around weaning to solids, everyone thinks that you should be doing a certain thing. Everyone thinks that you should be preparing healthy food, preparing purees, boiling vegetables to the perfect consistency. And whilst you should be making sure that your child has a healthy diet, it is all about balance and Juno never ate any of the stuff that I prepared for her freshly. I still did it. I still had freezer stashes of cauliflower puree, pear puree, mango, different fruits, different veggies mixed together, different textures, everything. She had it all. She would never eat a broccoli floret. She would never consume a soft carrot. She just played with them. Whereas if I had given her a rusk or if I had given her some fruit mashed, mashed into yogurt, she would have devoured it. Now, I guess what I'm saying is don't put pressure on yourself to constantly be preparing those fresh meals, those fresh purees. It is time consuming for your child to literally just throw it all over the floor slash anywhere other than go into their stomach. So, you know, if you need to give them, you know, you've got the delicious wafer bars that are really melty, any of those like melty sticks, melty puffs, they're great. 
just have backups, things that work for you. And you know, if you've got all the time in the world, then go ahead and prepare all of those fresh foods. But I found after a while that I just didn't have enough time to constantly give her fresh prepared purees or squidgy veg. So we did rely as well on puffs and sticks and what else? She had those wafer bars, the occasional rusk. She also really loved like a um, crushed up rusk with um, like breast milk or formula milk on. She loved that. It's about giving yourself grace and making sure that they have a healthy, balanced diet. This is another huge one that I wish I'd known before I started weaning. And this, it sounds ridiculous and I feel ridiculous saying it, but your baby won't waste away if they don't eat solids because they literally are getting everything they need, whether you're breastfeeding, formula feeding, however they are getting their calories. They, I think someone recommended that you don't drop any of their feeds until they suggest it to you and usually they won't do that until they're starting to eat solids we found probably after a couple of months that Juno was actually digesting some food and she would therefore not breastfeed as much Um, but still I would say and this sound I don't know if this is crazy but even now like she's six nearly 16 months she eats, but she's only really fully taken to it in the last six months. I say since she was one, there was like a bit of a turning point and she actually started having three meals a day, three snacks a day and two bottles of milk. And it just kind of happened. But for the for the six months leading up to that, when I started weaning up to her first birthday, it was so varied. Some nights she'd have a full meal other nights she wouldn't eat anything so when we sort of saw what she was consuming we'd be like okay she hasn't had much we'll supplement that with milk we'll offer her another breastfeed all of that stuff and you'll know as a parent when your baby is hungry they'll be giving you hunger cues so we would kind of sometimes as well start with solids with those hunger cues and then if she wasn't interested and she wasn't having enough then she'd have breast or bottle so yeah don't stress your baby's not going to waste away they will drink as much milk as they need and you can just add some little solids into that when you want to and eventually there'll be sort of like a little turning point and you'll see feeds dropping etc etc but yeah they're not going to waste away so another thing I wish I'd known before starting weaning is just because they throw it or spit it out doesn't mean they don't like it And I think it's really easy to jump to conclusions. And you hear it from people when you're sort of feeding your baby around other people and they spit food out or they throw it on the floor. Someone will say, oh, they obviously don't like that. And it's easy to think that as a parent as well. Like we tried broccoli loads of times, cauliflower loads of times, and they weren't things that she kind of naturally went to. Obviously, kids just want to eat fruit, don't they? It's like sweet and delicious. But just because they spit it out and throw it on the floor doesn't mean they don't like it. They will come round to it. Juno's still not a huge fan of broccoli and cauliflower, but I mash it into veg. So she gets it in her diet, but she doesn't love eating it on her on its own. To be honest, I have to do that with quite a lot of veg. She doesn't love eating veg literally in her hand that's fine we'll get there she's going to eat veg eventually she's not going to avoid it for the whole of her life hopefully (laughs) um so yeah just because they throw it and spit it out doesn't mean they don't like it next one is yours and your baby's confidence will grow with time and mine definitely has so has my partner feels we've actually had a conversation recently saying she's so predictable now with what she likes and what she doesn't like and how she feeds what she you know, the portion size that she has, she's really quite predictable. And even, you know, she'll run down in the morning first thing and she'll run into the kitchen and pull the drawer, which her bowls are in. She's like, it's breakfast time. Um, When she's hungry and wants a snack, she goes to the snack drawer. It does get easier with time. And obviously the more that they can communicate, the more that they can tell you what they want. So yeah, it is the first six months is a bit of a guessing game. 
from my personal experience, when Juno turned one, we turned a corner and it got a lot easier. She started exploring a lot more with different foods and she just was eating more in general. So it was less stressful for me because I, I just used to get quite stressed about the amount that she ate. Was she getting enough food? Was she getting enough milk? It's just like, ah, um, but she's a good way and she has always been a good way and the health visitors have never been worried about that. So she's obviously getting enough. It's just, you know, those parent worries that everyone has. And last but definitely not least is my favorite bit of advice and something I wish I had known sooner is food is for fun until they're one. One of my friends actually told me this little nugget of gloriousness and she is a doctor so I believe everything she says because she's a medical professional and she said that food is for fun until they're one. And it really kind of eased the process for me whenever I was getting stressed about her not trying things or, I mean, at some points during our weaning process, Juno would literally gag at foods. <laughs> like, you know, most kids love eggs, scrambled egg, fried eggs, like egg fingers, eggy toast, not Juno. She will not touch it. I have to hide egg in rice or in other meals. And even then, sometimes she's like, I see what you've done here. I'm not going to eat that. And she gags, like with it, in, she'll hold it in her hands and literally gag. So that's interesting. Um, but during all of those experiences, once I knew food is for fun until they're one, I just kept repeating that to myself. Just let them have fun. Just let them explore it. It's That's what it's about. And to be honest, I wish I had done that more. And I hope that with my second baby, I'll just be way more relaxed when it comes to weaning. And I mean, I probably won't even have the time to think about it, to be honest. I'll just let them get on with it. Um, but yeah, food is for fun until they're one is a really important piece of information. If that's the only thing you take from this video, then I think that's positive because it's the best one. Those are the things I wish I had known about weaning from milk to solids. We started weaning Juno when she was six months and we started with baby led weaning and what well, a mixture of baby led weaning and purees. We didn't want to go solely one way or solely the other. We kind of did a combination of both. I've got an itchy scalp, um, which I loved and I think it was quite easy on the go. And then we kind of introduced, you know, yogurt, smashed fruit in yogurt, um, all sorts of different textures. She was quite funny with textures for a while. It is a whole journey and try and enjoy it. I definitely didn't enjoy all of it, but I did enjoy a lot of it. There was ups and downs. So that's it from me today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video, the first part of this series. If you have any other parts of motherhood that you'd like me to cover, things I wish I'd known about, sleep training, uh, breastfeeding, all sorts of things jump in the comments and let me know because I'm going to do one of these videos every month. So hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on next week for my weekly upload. Lots of love. Bye.